physics. You'll be surprised that I talk Hinduism. So my background is nothing but quantum physics and, and theoretical physics. I tell you the three places where Hinduism will make a major contribution in the field of science of today. I'm not talking about Ayurveda. They're fine. Something much deeper. First is the issue of cosmology. See the universe, <clears throat> they call the Big Bang Theory. And there's this called space and time unfolding. See, ah, and the universe comes into being. Sounds like a very clever thing. But a question still arose. What triggered space and time to unfold? What was the trigger? And the answer from modern cosmologists, whether Stephen Hawking, whoever, is no, we don't know. We just want to spontaneous, we don't know who pressed the buzzer. And the theologians say, I think God did it. It doesn't work. The answer comes from our tradition. Look how ancient and powerful the tradition is. It says, three things unfold for creation to come into being. He said, three things? What are they? This is very ancient teaching. He says, Desh, Kar, Nimit, Space, Time, and Possession. When they stretch their arms, creation comes into being. This is Hinduism. See how well it sits with big cos with the cosmological model, Big Bang. It goes a stage further than modern cosmology, because cosmology doesn't know why. Hinduism tells them the answer why. If this is what it says. He said, didn't I tell you that three things unfold? The concept of cause and effect comes up with the Big Bang. So you can't say who caused the Big Bang. It follows Big Bang. It doesn't precede Big Bang. So you can't ask who caused the Big Bang. This question will not be answerable. Just as if you ask Stephen Hawking, what was there before the Big Bang? You say, don't ask. There was no time. If you ask Hindu, what caused the Big Bang? You say, don't ask. There was no what before the Big Bang. I'm just showing you one flavor that comes out of modern Hinduism 